Pirates. They had a good win on Friday night, a lot of fun. And uh, I think we play Friday night at Lions Field. Is that right, Coach? And, uh, man, we have a lot of fun. And so if you ain't got nothing going on Friday night, come out and watch Victory Play. And uh, good to have my brother in church with me today. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 and verse number 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you'd help me. I pray, God, you'd speak to hearts through your word today. I pray, God, that you would uh, anoint my mind, my lips. God, help me to say everything that you want me to say and nothing that you do not. I pray, God, that you would uh, arrest our attention, our minds. I pray, God, we would not worry about what's going on outside of this place for a few moments. I pray, God, Lord, that you would not let any interruptions or distractions uh, steal the attention of somebody that needs to be saved today. And I pray, God, you'd have your perfect will and way in this place today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, you can be seated. Over 2,000 years ago now, Jesus died upon Calvary, was placed in a borrowed tomb, and on the third and glorious day, he got up by his own power and resurrected from the dead. The Bible says, if Christ be not risen, we're of all men most miserable. But we're not miserable because we have a Savior that is alive and well. He raised from the dead, not just your Bible records these things, but historical documents, the works of Josephus, all kinds of things collaborate, what happened in this time period. Uh, I could put you on a plane with us, and we're talking about putting a trip together to go back to the Holy Land next year sometime. Uh, we can take you to the place where the, all of this transpired and walk on the very streets where he walked. Um, he, after his resurrection, was seen by over 500 of the brethren. And the day came where he ascended back into heaven. And as his followers watched him ascending into heaven, Jesus left behind a promise and said in so many words, I will come again. 
And now for 2,000 years, the church, the people of God, have been watchmen, obeying His Word, looking towards the eastern sky, where one of these days, the trumpet is going to sound, and Jesus is going to come back after His bride. You may say, well, I don't believe that. And I say, it don't matter what you believe. The Bible hasn't missed it yet, and it's not going to start with this event. We, as the people of God, are not looking for a sign. Everything that this Bible said was going to happen has happened. We, as the people of God, are not looking for a sign. We are listening for a shout. As Jesus comes back after his bride. Some would say, well, preacher, preachers like you have been preaching that for a long time. And it hasn't happened yet. That should not encourage you to believe that it's false. It should encourage you to run to Jesus that we are sooner and closer than we've ever been before. Your Bible is more relevant than tomorrow's newspapers. I remember just a few years ago, the book of Revelation in some areas did not make sense to me as I would read it. How is the Antichrist going to deceive so many people? How? How is this going to happen? How is that going to happen? How, how are they going to put a mark of the beast? How, how are they going to not be their buying nor sell? How is all that going to work? But now, it all makes sense. As we read 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, in an expository manner, as we'll go through uh, some of these verses this morning. Uh, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Uh, note the, the, the taking of the church. The taking of the church. I believe unapologetically, without confusion, without any controversy in my mind, I believe the very next prophetic thing on God's calendar to take place is the rapture of the local New Testament church. I didn't say the Baptist church and I didn't say the Nazarene church because there's only one church that's going up and that is those that have been saved by the good grace of Jesus, those who have called upon the name of the Lord, who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, whose names are recorded in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, the, the taking of the church in verse number 2, I believe it is. The Bible said that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us. Watch this. As that the day of Christ is at hand. Um, the only way I can illustrate that is that the very next thing for us Baptist folks is lunch. Fried chicken. Preacher Brown used to say, you'll go to hell for baking a chicken. You got to fry a chicken. Fried chicken. Corn, green beans, fried okra. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, mashed potatoes and gravy. and Yeah, lunch is at hand. The same way... The, the, the writer here is saying that the coming of the Lord, the day of Christ, is at hand. Um, the taking of the church is imminent. It is going to happen. It is the very next thing on God's prophetic calendar. And, and we are told concerning 
uh, this taking of the church and this, this, the day of Christ being at hand, not only are we told that, number one, that the, the, the day of Christ is at hand, but we are told to not to be soon shaken in mind or to be troubled, verse number two said, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us. Uh, not to be shaken in mind or be troubled. Uh, we are living in a day, an hour, and in a world that loves to try to shake people up using fear. Now, you've got to turn off the news channel. I have never in my life seen more falsities push forward than what we're seeing today. I literally, months and months and months and months ago, watched some kind of a uh, journalist agency as they kind of trapped this guy from CNN uh, concerning the, the plans of this news, or news organization and how he said, soon and very soon, we're going to start pushing climate change again. And then we're going to start pushing this and ramping things up for the next election. I watched him on camera expose what they're fixing to do. And here we are months later, and it's climate change. It is uh, COVID is coming back. Get ready to wear your masks again. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Um, get, get ready to, for lockdowns again. You're going to lock down. Let me just go make a statement. We did that one time and it didn't work. We ain't locking this church down again. Somebody say amen. Get ready for this and get ready for that. And I've already seen through their mess. The only thing that's real is there's an election coming up. And the only way they can control the narrative is by all their junk. But, but, but I, I, I'm watching as all of this fear-mongering is going around. Um, and your Bible said, Be not soon shaken in mind or in word. He said, Even if we send you a letter, don't let it shake you up. We, as the people of God, must not be given to following the whims and the ebb and flow of the everyday life and every bit of fear that is put down the pipe after you and me. We've got a book that already tells us everything that has happened and is going to happen. And I've already read the back of the book. We don't lose. We win. And he's saying, do not be shaken in mind or word. Fear not. Don't live your life in fear. Don't live your life hiding or scared. Uh, not only does he say uh, to not be shaken in mind or word, uh, Y'all throw the rest on the screen so I don't have to keep coming up here for me. Uh, he says this, that, 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 that there is a, uh, a dividing that is coming. In verse number 3, uh, he said this, that let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. A falling away. A day where people don't care about God. A day when people don't care about that Bible. A day when people don't care about right or wrong. And boy, oh boy, are we seeing that right before our very eyes. A day of dividing. But, but i got to tell you this. that The Bible said when you see these things, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Many of these things must take place for what's going to happen to take place. Your Bible teaches you and I about a one world government. 
a one world currency an antichrist that is going to step on the scene and not speak to a nation but speak to a global economy and say I know that nobody has been able to bring peace to this mess but I have the ability if you'll bow to me I have the ability to bring peace to all of this mess and he will be celebrated by the entirety of the globe economy wise and will preach and make people believe that he can bring peace to this mess some people teach and talk that America is not found in prophecy um, I believe the giving of this would allude to the fact that America uh, will have to fall for a global economy to take place and we're already watching as people are giving up on our nation and giving up on our country and willingly giving away their freedoms and their liberties. As an American right now, I get nervous at times. As I watch what is unfolding in the political world, in the religious world, and in the schemes around us, as an American, I'll be honest, at times I think, my goodness, this side can get away with whatever they want. And they're going to hold this side at every little word. You know, it, and I don't care what side of the aisle you lend it, it's all corrupt. It's all money, money, money. And we're watching as the, the, the mystery of iniquity is already at work. That which is right would be wrong, and that which is wrong would be right. And we're watching as it has happened in our nation and in our politics, a nation that was founded by Christian Judeo principles, the words of your King James Bible inscribed in the stones in Washington, D.C., our founding fathers, our Constitution, our, uh, the, the founding documents of our nation. Or it was not founded to be a Muslim nation or an atheistic nation. It was founded by Christians that wanted to leave Mother England to come to a nation to serve and worship the one true God and look how far we have come in our short little history as a nation the Bible still says blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and we have left the God of our founding fathers we have walked away from what got us to where we are mark her down write it down tell them I said it America is not the greatest nation in the world because of our military it's not the greatest nation in the world because of our Money. It's not the greatest nation in the world because of our manpower. America is where it is today because of the sovereign hand and a blessing of a sovereign God who has blessed us and taken care of us. And ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to live in the blessing that we have, it's going to be because there's people that are a remnant that believe there's a God in heaven that loadeth us with benefits. Um, listen, I still believe in revival. I still believe revival is possible. If God was done with the local church, We'd already be out of here, but we're here, honey. We're still here. God's church is still here. That means he's got a purpose for us. He's got a plan for us. He's got a reason for us. And may the church be the salt of the earth and the light of the world until the day Jesus comes back. There's a dividing, there's a dividing going on. It's not just in the politics. It's not just even in the world. It's not even in the secular. It's even within our churches. There is a liberal, loose, unbiblical, anti-gospel, progressive gospel movement that is creeping in. Well, I know, preacher, that you say that that's wrong, but everybody's doing it now <laughs> well preacher don't you know that if you preach it straight like that ain't nobody gonna come to church let me tell you what I'm finding I preached in Mississippi building four every night I preach here on Sunday, and it ain't, it ain't, here's what I'm finding. People are so sick and tired of this mamsy-pamsy, liberal, limp-waisted mess where nobody preaches against anything, nobody says anything of truth, they're not going to preach on sin, they're not going to talk about sin, they're not going to name. People are flocking to find a place 
where truth is upheld. And that's, listen, the church being the salt of the earth, it's a preservative. Salt is a preservative. And we are the last stand of truth. That doesn't mean we get arrogant. That doesn't mean we get mean. That doesn't mean we get hateful. It does mean that I love you. We love this city. We love our state. We love our nation. But we will not compromise truth at the cost of loving. We must hold fast to the truth of God's inerrant word. There is a dividing that is going on. The Bible calls it a falling away. I've seen people fall away. And we're watching a generation. You look at the stats of, I was reading just the other day, or from churches that are in the Southern Baptist Convention, especially, at the rapid rate of the decrease in baptisms and conversions. And what was way up here is now. Tell me why. Because there is a falling away that is taking place. He said, be not shaken in mind or word. He went on, not just as he talked about the taking of the church but he talks secondly here about the tribulation of the Christless the tribulation of the Christless on the authority of God's word here is what's next Jesus gave us a promise when he ascended he said, I will come again. What I just preached to you, the truth of it all, the, the, the stage is set. All things are ready. There's a dividing. All, all of these things are happening. I, I saw a, a, a little clip of something. I had to dig deep to find out the truth of all this. But Saudi Arabia is secretly behind the doors trying to reach Israel and make an allegiance and an alliance and a partnership with Israel. It was called this, a peace allegiance with Israel. What did it say? The Antichrist is going to come in and, and, and declare peace. And the news articles are even saying that they're being sneaky about it. They're being quiet about it. Iran is mad. They have found out. They're threatening what they're going to do if Saudi Arabia recognizes Israel. Palestine's mad. You got Russia up here. They're always mad. You got China over here. Uh, who knows what's going on over here? And we're watching as all these players that the Bible in the book of Revelation talks about, they're all on the scene, and all of those weapons are pointed at two places, Israel and America. The only two nations in the entire world that are founded upon biblical Christian Judeo principles and the only two nations in the entire world that are under attack and hated. BRICS, this European Union, have just met together all these nations and they're talking about removing the US dollar as trade for oil and America better wake up. It's gonna be a different nation if that takes place. All these things are taking place behind the scenes. And all of it is pointing to the fact that what this Bible said is absolutely true. And we believe that as a thief in the night, prior to the tribulation, I believe God has not appointed us unto wrath. We believe in a pre uh, pre-tribulation rapture. I do not believe that God's people are going to go through that. I believe a pre tribute I believe Jesus, the, the God of heaven, is going to step up off a throne and look at his son. And at that moment, that the, the angels don't know, 
The Bible said that, uh, figure this one out, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost, God knows, but the Son don't, I, I can't explain that, I'm not smart enough to figure that out, Jesus don't even know, but at this moment, God is going to step up off the throne and look at his darling son, Jesus, and say, you paid for her with your own blood, go get my children, Jesus is going to step out, Gabriel's going to, they're going to blow the, the trumpet, the trumpet's going to sound, you say, what's it going to sound like, I do not know, but it's going to be so loud that it will wake the dead. My grandma's going to get up out of the ground. My grandpa's going to get up out of the ground. I've got a little boy that's going to get up out of the ground. i got a mother-in-law that's going to get up out of the ground. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's where we get the word rapture. That's where that word rapture comes from. We are going to be raptured out. Gravity is going to lose its hold on our body. And in the middle of the air, what a meeting in the air. The rapture of the church, the taking of the church. We're going to be out of here. We're going to be gone. Josh will be pastoring the church the next week. Y'all pray for him <laughs> as he preaches. We will be, we will be out of here. And this world thinks that this world's a mess now. They want, they want us to believe that there's not a whole bunch of Christians left. And I believe that not everybody that sits in a church is saved, but they still a bunch of people that have been saved by the grace of God. I'm talking about airline pilots gone. I'm talking about massive amounts of vehicles that had drivers in them gone. I'm talking about people in homes and families gone. Imagine if it happened in the middle of a church service. And you was one of the minority or one of the smaller groups that is left. I see people who had a godly mom or godly daddy running to their daddy's house thinking, oh God, oh God. This is what daddy always told me about this. Surely, surely, surely daddy's home and they get there and daddy's clothes are laying on the ground. Mama's clothes over by the kitchen sink. The water's still running. Mama's clothes are laying right at, she gone. And the Bible says in these verses that he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. What does is, what is that verse mean? The he is the Holy Ghost. When Jesus ascended 2,000 years ago and went to heaven with his Father, the Holy Ghost came down. And he was given the distinct job to hold hell at bay and to comfort and to guide the people of God. So the picture here of the Holy Ghost is he that now letteth. That, that means he's the one that is holding hell back. Nothing happens to us that doesn't go through him first. He is holding back. He's letting, controlling. But when the rapture happens, and when we're gone, he goes with us. Amen. And the Holy Ghost will be reassigned, moved out of the way the Bible talks about. And ladies and gentlemen, you have not seen hell on earth. Like hell on earth when the Holy Ghost is removed from the picture. And the beast, false prophet, the devil, Satan will have unlimited access to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And will usher a people into this period, a seven-year term called the tribulation period. Three and a half years of relative peace. Where it will look like, as he calls and assembles people to himself, look at the peace I'm bringing to this world. Look how good all of this is. And the Bible says that a strong delusion will come to the people so that they would believe a lie. Throw those points up about the tribulation, fellas, on the screen, please. The Holy Spirit is removed 
Satan will be revealed. And then thirdly, look at this one. Salvation will be impossible. The Bible said that in this tribulation period that, 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 that it will be such a horrible environment after that three and a half years when the switch flips and the Antichrist comes on the scene and told a total world domination, uh, 666, the mark of the beast, uh, you'll need to be, you won't be able to buy nor sell. All of these things will take place. The Bible says they will run to the hills. They'll cry out to the rocks for the rocks to kill them, but they cannot die. Can you hear people? God, please save me now. People that maybe have sat in these services and had religion but never had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Church kids that were rocked to sleep by religion that knew Genesis but did not know the writer of Genesis that could quote John 3.16 but it never made it from their head Oh, God, forgive me. I'm ready now. But if you've heard the gospel, if you've sat in this kind of environment and heard the gospel preached, there'll be no salvation. That's why it is important to say yes to Jesus now. Never before in my life has this stuff made more sense than it makes now. And I've been all week long. I knew what I was supposed to preach this week when I left last week. God assigned me this stuff in my heart because I do not want to stand before God and have to give an account that if Jesus was to come back this week that you didn't hear the truth. Run to Jesus while there's time. Run to Jesus while you can. You say, preacher, you're just trying to scare me. I couldn't scare you if I tried. Hollywood has so desensitized the minds of people with all of their movies and all their gore. But hear me at the best ability that Hollywood could have to portray and paint a picture. Hollywood does not have the ability to portray the terribleness that will take place in this tribulation period. These beasts that are flying that look like a white lion with the wings. Are, oh, I'm talking about terrible, horrible things. People wishing they could die, finding no place to die. And I'm sitting here tell you that in 2023 at least for the month of September as of right now the doors of grace are still wide open as the Bible says come unto me all ye that labor in the heavy land I will give you rest run to Jesus in this tribulation period it'll be too late in my mind I've always pictured a moment where people leave their house and they run to this church and they bust the glass to get in the doors to unlock it. And they run in here and they start screaming, Oh God, I'm ready now. God, I'm ready. God, please give me another chance. God, I meant to get saved one day. I, I just wanted to live my life for a little while. I just wanted to party for a while. I just wanted to have a big time. for. I had all the intentions of getting saved one day. God, I'm ready now. No response. Scream as loud as you want. You will have officially sinned away your day of grace. I see husbands that had a praying wife. Husband lost. Never wanted to go to church. For whatever reason, she'd invite him. He would hear her praying for him before bed. He would get mad at how religious and how Christian she was. But I see him rolling over one day. And her gown is in the bed, but she's gone. He realizes, oh no. Is this what she's been telling me about? Is this that moment she's been talking about? He runs all over the house to try to find her, but he can't find her nowhere. She's gone. I know it sounds like a fairy tale, but this is the truth of the Word of God. There's coming a day, and I don't believe it's going to be long. The trumpet's going to be sound, 
and God's people are going to be gone. And the only way you go is not by being a Baptist. It's not by being a good old boy or a good old girl. It's not by being baptized, singing in the choir, giving in an offering. There has to have been a moment in your life when you believed the truth of the gospel. Where God gave you that ember of faith. And you were able to believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. You say it don't make sense. It don't matter. The truth. That he lived 33 perfect spotless years. Never lied. Never had a bad thought. Never did a bad deed. He was God wrapped up in flesh. They hated him. They conspired against him. They arrested him. They whipped him. They scourged him. They mocked him. They spit upon him. His bloodied, beaten body carrying that old rugged cross down the Via Della Rosa up to Mount Calvary where they laid him and his back that was already wounded from the stripes on that wooden cross. They took those large, Ben, they took those large, massive nails and drove them through his hands and through his feet. Should have been our cross. Should have been our pain. They lifted that cross up, Dylan, and put it in that pre-dug hole. There was no cushion to catch that cross when it went in that hole. The jarring of that cross going in that hole. He was innocent. He had never done a thing wrong. He was paying a debt that he did not owe. Some have said over the years that he could have called 10,000 angels. He could have. Matter of fact, I see them standing at attention waiting on the order or the call. The call never came. Because on Calvary, he looked down through time and he saw you. <laughs> For he knew me, yet he loved me. He whose glory made the heavens shine. I'm so unworthy of such mercy for when he was on the cross I was on his mind in those hours he bled and they said this crucifixion moment was asphyxiation he would have to push up to get a breath of air. And then he would slump back down, pain and the weight of his feet and his hands, the scars on his back, the nail pierced side. The sky grew dark as God had to turn his back on his own son because sin was upon him. He had the sin of the entire world upon him but that glorious moment when he said to tell us it is finished that was the symbol and the statement to God it's finished I have done the work that I came to do they didn't kill him he willingly laid down his life saying it is finished and he gave up the ghost and his bloodied, beaten body was taken off of that cross. They placed it inside that borrowed tomb, Joseph's tomb. 
Some say, well, his body just laid there for those three days. His body may have been there. But Jesus went, that great high priest, applied that blood to the mercy seat. And what the blood of goats and calves was a once a year thing, all the year. When Jesus applied the blood, it was finished for all time and eternity. The sin payment for every person that's ever lived. No matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, what can wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Wouldn't it be a shame to go to hell that your sin debt would have been paid in full? You got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And on that third and glorious morning, the ladies were coming to anoint his body, and the gardener said Mary and she knew that it was him the angel said why seek you the living amongst the dead he is not here for he is risen I've never seen him I've never touched him but as real as I believe in you and you and you God gave me enough faith to believe that everything I told you is as real as the ground I'm standing on and I'm thankful that I have enough belief that God gave me that one of these days when that trumpet does sound, when the trumpet sounds and Jesus steps out on the clouds of glory, I don't understand how it's all going to work. But I do know, based on the truth of the Word of God, gravity is going to lose its hold on my body. And forever and forever, and forever and forever, we as the people of God are going to heaven with our loved ones, those gone before. And I know everybody's got, well, I want to talk to old so-and-so. I want to see so-and-so. I want to talk to Paul and ask him what he meant about this. I want to, I want to go see Luke. I want to go see that blind man. I want to go see Zach. I want, I want to go see this. I want to go see that. Now, you know what we're going to say? Would y'all please take me? And let me see the one that died for me, that shed his blood for me, and will fall before him. And for about a million years, maybe Becky will sing a little bit of, you're worthy of it all. <laughs> Who knows? And for those of y'all that watch you watch every week when we go to church for an hour, hour and a half, I can't wait to see you worship for about 30 years in a row. And we ain't even got done with the first song yet. And as much of a joy eternity sounds like for the people of God, if you're not here, if, if you're here and you're not sure you're saved, things aren't right between you and God, think about how long eternity is going to be without Christ. In heaven, at some point in time, God's going to wipe all tears. You know what that means? There's going to be mamas that have sons that were lost that would never listen, never come to church, never get saved. While that boy, while that daughter is living in eternity without Christ in a place called hell, God will have wiped the tears of that mother. And in, that mind, in the mind of that mother, not only will you be separated for all eternity, there'll be nobody that even remembers you exist. That is the importance of this church being a gospel-centered church, that we preach the truth. Listen to me very carefully. I'm done. Come to Christ while you can. Don't say no. I'm not here to try to get you to join this church. I'm not trying to turn you religious. I'm trying to get you to think about your eternity. This world is so fast-paced. All this stuff going on. Calm down for just a moment and consider eternity. Here's what the Bible says. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But God commendeth his love toward us. And while we were sinners, Christ died 